Hi there, Zipier with LGS Day 3 recap. But before we begin, I want to explain you the Aurora situation. You will most likely wonder why Aurora played as a duo. Well, this is kind of complicated, but initially Aurora was made out of 9 Impulse, Oiren and Taskmaster. But unfortunately, because some visa issues, Taskmaster couldn't make it to LAN and they needed someone really fast because the LAN was approaching. So they decided to go with Uxako. Well, that unfortunately didn't end up so good for Aurora. From the research I done, the boy actually didn't uh, manage to get along they weren't on the same line from what the nine impulse said uh, Uxako kept uh, talking over him didn't listen to to his calls and things like that he had a different approach he had a different uh, play style and they decided to replace him with uh, their emergency sub but unfortunately because Uxako wasn't ill or didn't have some visa issues i think that was the requirements they couldn't swap him with uh, their emergency sub and this is where things got uh, pretty bad Uxako got to twitter and said this after those rough days aurora decided to play with tax their emergency sub kind of sense since i travel for a lot of hours but it is what it is i wish them good luck just posting it so no one gets surprised when i'm not in the stage playing today and he posted this message of Oiren saying Uxako we're gonna play tomorrow with Taxington thank you for help we made this uh, decision since we don't have synergy and super hard to play together after this tweet and after Aurora realized they can play with their sub Uxako came to Twitter and said that Aurora uh, told him to lie to the admin so they can get their sub which was uh, not a great look from the boys from Aurora but that's not the full story because uh, 9 impulse came out with a response you will have the response on screen uh, the English is not so good but I will try to explain you what uh, he says uh, basically he says that uh, uh, Uxako didn't came uh, with his own money everything was paid for him he will get 10% uh, from the price pool which is pretty nice uh, I will say and also uh, they gave him the opportunity to play in the world championship there was a kind of a language barrier also nine impulse uh, says they didn't play Play well together uh, he had a different approach to the game a different play style but yeah he wanted to say that it's not really like uh, Uxako said and they actually asked him to play with them again and and he didn't want to do that so after that they told him uh, if he could uh, tell the admin he's sick so they can uh, qualify for the emergency sub and also he was willing to still give him that 10% of the winnings because after all he played with them but yeah things didn't work out they played as a duo both sides got uh, a lot of hate Uxako and the Aurora boys got a lot of hate but uh, yeah this is a difficult situation I am very proud of the boys playing as a duo they still managed to beat full teams as a duo as well I just can't imagine how uh, how things would have turned if they could uh, play as a full team but yeah that was a recap of this uh, Aurora drama and why they played the a duo in LGS. Okay, now let's start the video. Enjoy this day three recap and I will see you in the next one. See you. And now Element 6, MDYY, they are forced to get into that next zone. There's not a lot of space and Element 6, they're just hugging the ridge line, oh able to grab it, not Lord. on Beiju. Oh my gosh, they're going in. Tyler, 1HP trying to hang on. Slayers goes down. K Swinney, the IGL on Fuse, trying to connect, finds the last members, but they're not going to be enough because they're getting third partied. Last Knuckle Cluster does a little bit of damage, but it doesn't save the team. Nothing could at this point. He's been playing as opposed to Watson. Makes this rooftop that more awesome for them. Yes, other teams will elect to smoke them out. Maybe they're going to be pushed on by Horizon. Do you see the black hole coming in? But Surdell has the wall, just needs to turn around. And oh he gets it. Lord. He gets the knock on to Ling. North Epson may be in trouble here. Zane One just more. needs to stay up. Hip fire that 30-30. Let it connect. But they are trying to maintain the rooftop. No. Sir Dell couldn't save the team in the end. Satsuki has jumped down on the low ground, leaving just one member left of North Epson. On the other side of this, remember there's a team looking at everyone from height, and Satsuki only has so much he can do. Pioneers, neither Newcastle back in the game. Sir Dell would provide such an incredible reset for them. And up on the high ground, Lisite de France wait for their chance to pick up a victory. 
but pioneers trying to reset on the side of the building, not pushing the issue. I can only imagine that FC Destroy is trying to kind of push out, clean up the end of that fight, because could you imagine if they were able to reset? Aimbot scan has revealed one big threat to Lacite de France, one big threat to their chances to win this game. Fnatic on the low ground, have a generator, have plenty of space, and now Lacite de France have to focus their attention on two fronts while getting Gibby ulted. They've given up too much space, and up onto the high ground, we've got another entrant, FC Destroy, now on the ridge line with a Gibby bubble. They cannot be unseated. But Fnatic, as they creep sever so closely towards Fulverex, it is now FC Destroy that we turn our attention to. Six eliminations, they've got a Prowler, they've expended the bubble, they're barreling forward, and Pulverex seek to try and play the building as much as they can, because that's where FC Destroy had originally been. Can they even survive at this point? Lucite de France had to send it down onto Fnatic, and they got instantly wiped up. FC Destroy's play has cost them big in momentum towards Antenna, but they could turn it into a kill on Fnatic, being beamed. Hammer Drill has to back away for a moment, but they get enough knocks that you've essentially secured that Fnatic can no longer participate. FC Destroy have to play for control that they have so well earned. Meltzera is currently the only one up from Fnatic. Yuka has been fooled, so maybe we can see the rest, but Suzuki went to the rooftop and is just trying to keep out of sight right now. We have eight points. They've already packed up some eliminations. We have four squads remaining. Not a lot of teams have their full power, except for FC Destroy. So utilizing the Bangalore ultimate is the perfect time. And now let's see the grab flip play from Suzuki keeping alive as much as possible as Fnatic is eliminated. Gibby Bubble crucially coming back up in the nick of time, giving a little bit of moments to FC Destroy to heal up. It's North Epson to take out Pulver X and with just one member left, we all know who's winning this game. It is a well-deserved pickup by FC Destroy. FC this Destroy, North Epson, Pulverax, Fnatic. That is what we needed to see. But the majority of that region are starting here in the elimination round one, and only the top 10 will advance. Well, it is safe in the next zone. Well, they don't have to fight now. If they stay here, they are signing their own death warrant. There's no way to play this area. Kick, okay, they're forced to horizon oh. all themselves. It almost turns into a pick. Will they finish the job? Yes, Mycy goes down, Bambino is out, but with Stall down and flown at 50 HP, Kick cannot survive. Complexity come in for the third party, and they get to roll up on Go Next, pushing the last member into zone. But with Monsoon down, things have become really difficult for Complexity. Got to finish off the kill. They lose one, and we'll go next. Do falter. It's Monsoon that is taken out in a massive way. And Enter Force 36, hearing all the chaos, decide to forego, taking a position in zone, and they want to take them out and they push knowing they have a numbers advantage 3v2 and complexity is essentially stuck inside the building stunts coming in the double time yes it activates but you can't move enough but look at the dark veil splitting through and oh. luda luda will fall cody cody where are you at you're getting pushed into a corner and complexity will fall yeah two tyler fps new to the team here for champs trying to make something happen. We saw Element 6 take out one member of Aurora early on and have played it forward, leaving that building and trying to take on Onyx Esports. On your screen right now, Bloodhound Scan's coming in. They're getting information, but all the smoke, it doesn't matter. Whoa, you can whoa, try whoa, to barrel whoa, whoa, up the whoa. stairs, but you're going to get immediately punished by Shady. Element 6 getting a little bit too antsy there, and it's a nice response for a moment. However, sat in this hallway, there's not a whole lot of space they can play, and having just lost Tyler, we talked about the 2v3s earlier, Swinney seems to be clutching it up, a few more shots could keep Element 6 in this, and Onik go down! But not before the other teams want a piece of this, we knew this was going to be a bloodbath, Slayers able to reinforce the door, Skinny bring it in the mother load, the knuckle clusters using every bit of ability to keep all the pressure off Element 6 so they could try to reset. It's going to be slow playing it for now. The 2v3, you have to pick your moments. And speaking of picking your moments, it looks like KCP picked theirs. We talked about how they wanted to throw Zane at problems. That they certainly have done, knowing that Pulver X were pushing up onto their high ground. Zane has dealt with it. And a quick Horizon ult just puts Pulver X in an even worse position. In fact, Area 310 could very well be in trouble off this push as well. Zane has pulled everyone down. With J-Link's going out, the seat to France low. We're going to drop a few squads soon. 
Let's see Defrance able to take out j -Lings just similarly to where Element 6 is, so we need to keep an eye on that now duo. But the fact what KCP is doing, they have one member of the team anchoring up in the zone on the rock, overlooking them with Nasuke and Zhang going back to regroup with the team. As we get an overlooking, it's actually going to be Enerforce 36 going up against Riddle Order. Yukio on your right trying to maintain some kind of off angle with the mountains. The Dark Veil has already been expecting. And Yukio with the Bangler spoke, knowing he has a Digi threat, it's almost like luring them into a trap. At this point, Riddle Order playing off the low ground are running out of time with Yukio falling to half HP. Tappy struggles for a grip oh. on the fight and goes down instead. Up on the high ground, BK has got to clutch it up for the team. With an R99 in hand, anything is possible, but now he's being shot in the back. And now, Riddle Order, even after a small victory, will ultimately go down. Enter Force 36, own the north side of the zone, and they've got plenty of time for a reset. And while they reset, can we please talk about the 30-30? Because it, is, it has been so detrimental in some of those up-close fights and a hundred thieves. Speaking of up-close, Gibby Bubble to try to and run straight into the hands of G.O. and KCP. Now, Scurry, last alive, electing to choose to throw the defensive bombardment while he goes for the res. I think they're actually going to get this as well. Nobody else seems to be pushing them. And as you say, defensive bombardment provides a really nice zoning tool. Unfortunately, as soon as it expires, Scurry loses his teammate once again. 100 Thieves are back to just a solo. Have to plan out a rotation of their own. Ult excels onto Kizarun will help them a lot in terms of being able to use a catalyst wall and block out a lot of other squads that could contest them. Well, if there's one thing I've learned about 100 Thieves right now, it's like I get knocked down, I get back up again, and Pioneer is a barrel forward, knowing this is a power position against Enter Force 36. Naski will fall, but they've already got a knock on to aim, but the trades are coming in, and they just need to find the last member. Enter Force 36 will fall, and a gold knockdown in the hands of a Newcastle is a blessing. They have a world of a mountain ahead of them. Look at all the space that KCP is working on taking, and yes, an evac tower in the distance are about gold, actually, but it doesn't matter. Zane's gonna shoot him, and we're looking at Duck Hunter right now. Unfortunately for Pioneers, this flank, even if it's by a squad that will ultimately die, is splitting their attention, letting teams like LCDF start to move up on them. In fact, Zane is committing so much attention over here that it could go very poorly for them. Element 6 have just gone down. We're in the top five squads, but Pioneers have to regroup and find a way to dissect this engagement. They are just sitting back, looking to find any amount of KB. Nice. And Zane from a mile away with the R9 black hole going out, trying to capitalize on this. LCDF has fallen, and Gone Beret might be next. They oh, are. Yeah. Now we turn our attention to the final squad, Area 310. But this is all Zane, baby. Let's go, Zane! Absolutely incredible finish. Woo! What was that? He looks like he is vibing. Honestly, oh, so those jerseys are super sick. I like the reflective, but you can see nine eliminations from Godrock. And even splitting up as a squad, electing to leave your new castle, <laughs> your anchor from Meat Mountain between. At this oh, point, wow. Pioneers. I think we all, we could all have expected where they sit. Pioneers, though, they're positioning themselves inside the wall, hedging their bets that it will close towards this. Think of where complexity is. Now, the last time I saw a similar zone to this, it was actually LG Chivas that was electing to play from where complexity was. It did get them a top five finish, but you have to be able to survive, especially if we're still in uh, outside the zone. We've already used a Gibby bubble, and just like that, DSG making waves. It, it's going to be a real battle in the crowd because MDY have a lot of support. What they don't have is their Gibraltar, but in a two versus one situation, disguised go down and MDY claim another victim. 17 squads in the lobby and teams like 100 Thieves trying to make it in and just like that, Area 310 pushing up on them and Scurry's already fallen. And once you lose your Gibraltar, you lose so much more than almost any other legend because of the instant reset that he otherwise allows. Okay. Area 310, they know this. They know they've got the numbers and have taken out the cornerstone okay. of the team. And look for the finish. Hemlock's gonna do it. And 100 Thieves go down. Three and G.O. Dogma is down, but they do have the Newcastle up. May prior to Oritize trying to get down there and get Dogma back. But this is gonna be tough because go next is the team underneath them. 
little bit of a tough spot as well. Oh. Misunderstanding how far oh. the block then would go. No nade connects and go next. They certainly what? do. That is a clean finish from go next. FC destroyed though with the zone at their back are climbing up that hill. They cannot stop here. The final boss is calling. It is time to engage in battle. An evacuation tower is the last hope from Case 20's knuckle cluster. This is bad. One bullet in the air would take out their Gibraltar, making their landing all the last oh, save. Where will FC destroy go? They managed to land just in the nick of time underneath the bridge, oh. but they're split. Yuka makes it with 25 HP. Well, Riddle go down, eight teams left. We get another defensive catalyst wall, and somehow FC destroy are alive. Not sure if they'll have enough time. Hopefully, they'll have ult excels to get that Dark Veil back up. Should a team push? Out. Fnatic on the left hand side of your screen, and Element 6 has have cleared out the backs and they just need to fight. But playing the high ground, I know it's gonna open them up, but as long as they can smoke out everyone in case Winnie doing a lot of damage, not necessarily going to take them down, but Tyler FPS, Jump. he this gets one, he gets one. <gasps> Element six hit the floor and drop like flies. Complexity were waiting here the whole time and finally pop up to collect a little bit of KP. This is a top five situation that Complexity will find themselves in. They just have to survive these couple of fights, but Monsoon does get caught out, forced to retreat, smoke and dodge. Cody with an L-Star. They just need to prioritize not overextending. Their play of action should be to hold forward and go left on the building. Point. Holding out the remainder of the teams to their north. Okay. They go next to the last couple of members of Element 6. That is a huge drop on Mycy. And ultimately, they don't even need to make the push. Go next. Sandwich between two squads are out. Health or meds or anything from that, but you can see they're just going to loot quick, upgrade their shields, and then prioritize going back. All of the ultimates enacting across of FC Destroy, and Fnatic still needs to move. FC Destroy, albeit it was a very scary move to take this bridge, but doing it is going to be proving dividends. Absolutely. Now, their concern does have to be Fnatic, who are positioned off to the north. You can see them on the highlights starting to rotate up a catalyst wall, separating these two squads. It's nice and opaque, but it is paper thin. And very little that Fnatic have to work with is actually going to let them be safe. A Phoenix kick popped by Umichan, lets him move a little bit closer forward. Complexity wait on the low ground. Complexity, who have one of the best spots in this end game zone. The biggest problem for them is going to be the contest on roof, and Monsoon has that well in hand. I like this. He does have a nade, a sky nade going out. Will it connect to Enter Force 36? Yes, you are able to put the piercing spikes down to prevent any teams from moving up, but Monsoon is a Bangalore with a digi threat and on oh, a yeah. mission, and he's able to do so much damage. Does get oh, tagged no. up, but Cody, you need to be able to capitalize on what Monsoon has already started. Unfortunately for them, with Luda getting fried earlier, Complexity are really struggling to make this push together, and the more time they waste here, the more time that everyone else is going to have to take note of this engagement and plan a third party. Complexity quickly appear to abandon this pursuit of fighting for the roof and instead are gonna focus on Fnatic, the only team ahead of them that can challenge for the low ground. This is crazy, Enterforce 36 playing from where we saw Star to Fight Esports win this zone early on and this is going to be everything. Complexity trying to maintain, they're able to eliminate Fnatic and now have enough points to break through the cusp and put them into the top 10. Wonderful play from Complexity again, approaching this wall zone with precision. Monsoon's clearly got a lot of energy even after the first two games because the pre-game song seems oh. to be enough. Enter oh. 436 on the high ground. Get to farm up. This is what the position is for. And make no mistake, Tiff, it is a game-winning position. Eight kills already collected by this monstrous team. And they just keep them coming. Enter Force 36 needed this triple red. The only issue I have is with the ammo Push that is the in the hands of Enter Force 36. But speaking of ammo, Cody's got plenty of it. But Luda and Monsoon, they need to help this out and stay alive. I don't know if they'll be able to stick this, but Monsoon's gonna punch and run, trying to get him into a safe position. It's a really good punch, and Monsoon, I think, recognizing what took Cody down, being shot in the back by Interforce 36. 
can't stick around oh, for too long, it. but this position is really good. Kick want to wide swing this kick, want to finish them off, but Clone doesn't have the health to do it, and it's got to be a full commit. Cody's going to be able to heal up on the back, but Kick are bleeding out. Their indecision is killing them in wall, and they're gone just like that. Three squads left, complexity on the low ground, Ender Force on the high ground, and North Epson below them. And Cody's able to get that full heal up. They have their Bloodhound. Should they be smoked out, they can prioritize with the Bloodhound scan just for the information of the time being. But Ender Force 36, they have just a moment's notice before they will have to full jump out. The Dark Veil coming out because North Epson underneath them need to escape. But if they can wait it out on the high ground, the only Skydate. thing is, started by Esports, when they played Skydate. high ground, they had a Jenny. That is the biggest difference here. There's no Watson on this, this roster. Is, this is utter decimation. North Epson clinically take out Ender Force 36. Go. Now have to deal with Complexity, who come up from below. Luda waits on the low ground, and Complexity are your champions, picking up a win in game three. We are, we send gifts to each other. That's nice and wholesome. I like it yes. a lot. And you know what, honestly? What, that's wholesome? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe not that very good. And look at this as it stands. FC Destroy on top. APAC representing, but Complexity, North America, Pioneers, EMEA, North Epson, back to APAC, rounding out our top four. Inner four shortly behind, tied with Element Six. But these are our top 10. Who needs to step up? I talked about Disguise. They haven't shown up the way I thought. Safety and the most important thing for Disguise is going to be outputting pressure onto other teams, keeping their spot from being the first oh. one to be pushed. Area 310, one of their biggest threats right now with a small angle that could very well let them take out Disguise as the map gets split by a catalyst wall. We've got so many teams clamoring for position in what will soon be the final zone. Well, that's Element 6 over there. They throw out the Dark Veil Slayer, as you can see, goes down in the distance. They were vying for Riddle Order's positioning, who have been able to maintain. But now Geo with the late rotation from the tops of Stormcatcher. Everything is breaking out. Multiple Veils, multiple grab lifts. Leica, one HP and a dream. North Epson leaving the building, trying to survive. And Ling appears to be the last one. Complexity are doing great right now, playing right underneath. They're catching so many teams by surprise, farming up so much KP. Five kills alone have been picked up in the course of the last few minutes, and they have yet to drop a member. But as they start moving up into Riddle, Complexity are damaged. They're being shot from above. MDY are contributing, and they've lost Monsoon. MDY drop to finish the squad and take the engagement with the second. Riddle order, fight for their life. But MDY have the tools to take them out. LQ takes a quick reset. Gibraltar bubble still around. And importantly, the shield swaps keep MDY in it. Fantastic execution from them. The fact that Disguised is still alive, still in it, doesn't matter what utilities you take to the grab lift, prioritize your healing, evade from the abilities, and play this ridge line that you were saying, this is a game-winning spot. Can they stave off a little bit longer? Pulverex have fallen. We're down to the final three. MDY White, Fnatic on your right, and Disguised to the north. Who can actually take control right now? now because the power the balance of power has shifted fanatic have so much put on disguise that mdy have a good chance oh. of being able to manufacture a win umichan is isolated and again dsg is taking up so much attention fanatic having so much respect are taking the wide swing forcing dsg into mdy and it's going to be the thing that changes this game the fact that disguise have full sent why White puts Fnatic in the power position. They can just push straight into the Gibby bubble. Okay, Yuka, we see nice. you. Oh. Able to grab a knock. Now to the final two squads. MDY White in front of them. It's I Fnatic. believe in a Yuka supremacy. I believe in Fnatic. I don't know if you can hear them, but the crowd is going crazy for Fnatic. They we will be seeing Fnatic in tomorrow's games. For now, it's a matter of time and of holding on for teams like Complexity, Fnatic, MDY, FC Destroy, and perhaps even the Pioneers. You're not but it's all about these late arrivals, these squads that are just fighting on the outer edge because no one's been able to get close to the center zone. It's all happening on this eastern side as Fnatic are also showing what they can do on the northern side now against Pioneers, but there's Go Next and Kick and Riddle Order here on set. Look at Zane, Zane's holding this. Oh, he gets a stick as well! The black hole is good, but it might not be good enough. It's two 
teammates have gone down and now it's about escaping as a solo. And I was about to say, the situation that is developing here for Pioneers is the nightmare one. There was multiple teams pressuring. Go next, they were being pressured from behind by Kick, forcing them into Pioneers. Fnatic had to leave their position as well with the zone closing, and Pioneers were just meat in a sandwich. I mean, this eastern side is nuts oh right God. now, but Fnatic are the main winners just because with Pioneers going down, it's allowed them to push out. Go next, eliminated, but Riddlord and Kick are still there and are still a presence. This eastern side is just full of squads. You're not going to get shot from any angles. You can now just stay alive. When I say building, I mean train car, of course. That's going to be up there and available for them. But FC Destroy still have to find a way up here on set. Well, this is going to be a continuation of the battle of the southern side of the zone. Hammer with that digi threat. He's also got the L-Star to play with as well, so he is suited and booted and ready to throw down to anybody who wants to challenge. But the zone is closing in just 20 seconds. This fight needs to be ended quickly by one of these teams. And Onik Esports, by the way, still on top of Barrage as well. They're just waiting for the opportunity to pounce. Yeah, but pounce or leave, you've got to try and choose quickly here because in seven seconds, the zone's going to be tickling you. It's J-Links who hold one of the more commanding positions, but now Enter Force 36 down to just one. Bors is going to have to try and work with whatever you can here, but there's so much attention over towards him. And even if you get the shield swap, are you really going to survive? Well, the question is, is he going to have the health meds in time? He's going to have to walk next to this zone, tiptoe and hope that that smoke in front of him keeps him alive. Onik now have to drop. You see them dropping from the high ground. Natsuki has been eliminated, meaning that Pioneers will go as well. And Onik Esports trying to use his grappling to get away. Oh my god, Crusader! He's hitting anything that moves at the moment, but can Onik survive? Trying their best, try as they might, but it's not looking great. Two have fallen and they held so long at Mirage Atois. Triple take as a last stand is not going to do it. Eight squads now remain, but this is where everyone wants to be. In this final circle, over towards the train tracks. Fnatic are still forcing their way in. Remember, they were on the northern side. Now they find themselves on the south. And look at the KP as well. They are starting to stack them up here, Fnatic. The winners of our final game on stall point. Well, maybe they want to start off with a win here on World's Edge as well. But now you're seeing j trying to Come on, the space around them, trying to hold down this one, but JMW has fallen as Fnatic looked down on all of this carnage. Well, J-Link's held this for so long, but now this is perfect for Fnatic. This is perfect for them to try and push in and finish off the pieces and take control of one of the bigger positions on this map. But who has moved in on the north side? It's going to be Element 6. Element 6 have been so quiet in this game, but when it matters, they've taken one of the best positions. Senox hits the hip fire shot with the 30 30 to take North Epson down. We have five squads now remaining. This is so important for Disguise. As a two, may I add, they were able to get center zone, but as you quite rightly pointed out, it's element six that have now got into the high ground. They have taken control of the tracks. And the element six fans in the crowd starting to maybe think there is a win on the horizon for them here, especially when Tyler's hitting shots like that. This is where Tyler does his best work. When he's got bodies in front of him, when he knows he's got the support behind him as well. And oh, there is Tyler. an example! Duper full! Tyler goes in for the shield swap, will be able to get it, stays alive, Jaylings eliminated. In the meantime, Fnatic still scrapping on the low ground and looking to work their way up. Realistically, this is Element 6 versus Fnatic. The rest is just rats. You've got one from Aurora and you've got one from Disguised. Can Fnatic and E6 avoid those rats and take a straight 3v3? Tyler knows there's one rat here. He saw one player leave the building. And that's going to be a member of Aurora. Disguise have been eliminated in the meantime. It's not an impulse from Aurora, the duo who takes down Senox. It's E6 versus the solo. Nine impulse from Aurora taking on Fnatic. And this should be E6's game. They hold the high ground. Fnatic have to come up towards them with where the circle's moving in. But what's going to make the difference is the rats. Nine imps can really ruin someone's day if he can go unavoided, maybe shoot someone in the back. But I think E6 have spotted him out. Yes, they have. And Tyler looks to try and make sure work. Tyler's going to drop on this. He wants that kill when he gets it. He can use the grappling to get back up. It's a smart play from Tyler because now he can rejoin the fight. But the problem is the dark player is even better from Fnatic. They completely cut the zone in half. They step through, and this should be back to back here as Melzera goes in. Fnatic! Back to back here in the elimination bracket. But I'm worried for the likes of 100 Thieves on the eSports. Even Jay Ling's, that's 18th, 19th, and 20th at the moment in the overalls here. And go back to our positions. Elsa on the map, Red Lord now. We mentioned how they are on the cusp of qualification at the moment. 12th position overall. And they're hitting some good shots through the smoke, but there's those 
Missile swarming in. The knock doesn't quite come in. Can they connect? No, the double peacekeeper shot coming in from Juzla to keep Riddle Order on the back foot here. The extra last player alive. Can he win it? Yes, he can win against one, but doesn't quite have it in him to win against another player from Gambale, Oytasani Juzna, who made that big play with a PK, two shots that connected. And he's one of these fights. They're so important on set as well, because you've got to be getting those points on the board. You need to be doing it now with only two games remaining after this. E6 eliminated. It was a top two before, but they could not replicate it, even with a somewhat similar zone. As now Fnatic are going to be pushing up on MDYY, saying this tunnel looks quite good. I mean, they have to fight it. It's as simple as that. The zone is forcing them into this engagement. And Fnatic, who are going to have to take a few seconds here to heal. You can see Yuka and Mancera have to pop batteries. They're going to rely on Uma Chanchic to keep the pressure on. Now that reset has come on. It looks like Fnatic might be losing this fight. MDYY moving in. Trying to pick up the pieces. The spray with the nemesis. The peacekeepers here as well. Fnatic will not get the three beat. And it's MDY White who clean them up. Oh, 100 Thieves are in trouble as well. Omnu now, the last to remain. Arkstar's going down, but it is a 1v1. North Eption on the other side. Great damage, and he knows his flesh too as 100 Thieves eliminated elsewhere. And North Eption, even though they were able to win that engagement thanks to some help, now what do you do? You're stuck between a rock and the ring on this northern side, and there's other teams that have already got eyes on you. It's Onyx Esports. Onyx Esports who are still alive, by the way. Remember how quickly they made their rotate to that truck. Well, now they've cleared out this side of the ring. If they could take clear we go. of that solo, it would be massive for them. But here's the fight we were waiting to see. The Vault Tunnel, access to Landslide, about to be decided. Complexity got that first knock, but are they able to capitalize on it? Can they close the space and keep the pressure on the knock? It's turned into two, and now you see Complexity force their way into zone. Yeah, Complexity making sure that last remaining kick player was running with the tail between their legs as kick get eliminated because they ran into Pulverex, who are waiting on the other side of this tunnel, as are MDY White, by the way, looking to try and take down Pulverex. So there is so much action on this southern side of the circle right now. Aurora gone as well. The solo player is out of here. Pulverex as a duo. How many times have I said that over the last couple of years of Apex Legends? Oh, it might not be a duo for much longer, though. They have the banner, and they can get that beacon in. Oh, Excel being popped here as well. Complexity trying to plan their next move, trying to work their way out. They will be able to scan. They do have the Bloodhound in the composition, so they're not going to be caught off guard. Northception, the solo, has been eliminated as well. Like it could not eke out a few more placement points. So now that means that Onik were in a position to control the northern side of the zone, but here comes the push for complexity. Also, the final player of Pulverex back onto the map now will be respawned. And all the meanwhile, Pioneers still up in their castle on top of Landslide. Seven squads remain, oh, but oh. one of them is complexity. Enter Force 36, also involved in this scuffle as I catch my breath for just a few seconds. Oh, it gets you that one. I've been there before. Geo versus E36. Sometimes that's the easier way to say it, but oh, another one falls as Geo go down. Six squads remain, and it's pioneers from a distance just adding gunfire to every fight right now because they can see the lay of the land. They can see everything. The lay of the landslide, should I say. Very, very smart from you. At least you can string some sentences together. It's good for both of us. Anyway, MDY White. Having won that fight, excuse me, having watched that fight go down, still have to deal with complexity. The arm shield still eating a lot of that Kraber bullet from the Gibby. But complexity need to make their move soon. Yeah, complexity can't afford to stay here because they're going to be forced out and they will be in the vision of the likes of Onyx, the likes of Pioneers. They do have smokes to work with. Monsoon taking his angles and says, you know what? Screw you guys up there, I'll smoke you as well. Here we go. There's a 140, that's the opportunity to push, but there's the Gibby bubble as well, but they will have to leave in just a few moments' time. Does Mon have the timing on this? Can't quite connect as the Gibby jumps over the bullet. I mean, Gibby bubble plus rolling thunder going down, complexity. This is their chance to try and escape. They are safe, though. They are safe. As long as Monsoon can keep smoking off, Pioneer's up on that high ground. They oh will be able to survive here for a few moments. It's that heaven. Oh, it's just oh, a right oh, Monsoon! Still alive, but I tell you what, that was dangerously close. They are being focused at the moment by Pioneers up on that high ground. Enter Force 36 as well. They're finding out what it feels like to be at the end of Zane's 33. And E36 are not in the worst position. With where the circle moves, it's going to move to E36 side of this crane. So 
Pioneers are actually going to have to move across the crane if they want to. But they're still in one of the commanding positions, of course, with the elevation they have. Polvorek still alive, by the way, as a duo. It's what they do best. Here comes the push. Finally, we're going to see the fight. Cody! Cody with the big shots with the PK. Complexity are winning this. Complexity have won this fight that's been going on for so long. But can they get the shield swap? Because here comes Onik. Onik want to get involved on this one, but they're being pressed from the other squads as well. Pioneers are looking down on it, saying, you know what? We're not allowing anyone to have a free push. We want a little bit of this damage. Complexity still alive for the moment. EMP going down as well. As Zayn tries to take this off angle, but has this just opened the door, Dan? Has this just provided the in invitation here for Interforce 36 to enter the fight at just the right time? I think it's actually perfect for them to avoid the fight, because Interforce 36 can just go on to this western side. Pioneers down to one, Zayn the last remaining player, but he gets shut down. Luda still alive, Complexity managed to stay here, dominating, but Luda should fall, and he does. Three squads now remain. And Onik, who are 20th position coming into this, they're still alive. Interforce 36 now make the contest on that high ground. They will take it away. They will command the top of this crane. Holverix is still alive, by the way, as a two. They took the northern side when Pioneers, they moved off of the north. And Onik is still a 2-2. This is great for E36. Onik have taken control of the zone. And of course, 36, though, they have control of the height. And you'd be very surprised to maybe see E36 throw this away. By the way, Polverix, shoot me, f Chan. No shields whatsoever to play with here. But still alive, so who cares? I mean, I've seen crazier things happen, but you'd imagine that this is unwinnable for Pulverex. And it should be extremely winnable for Enterforce 36, but this win could be enough to send them into elimination round two. So there's no reason for them to get, take any risks here. You play this safe, you play this riskless, you ensure this victory. Aimbot with a digi threat. Living up to his name right now as he's shredding through Raki on the low ground. Onik Esports eliminated, and you said it was impossible for Pulverex? Well, if they can get a couple of shield swaps and something wacky happens, then maybe they can do it themselves. But Enter Force 36, they will fall. They will clean up the pieces. And E36 get the win on the board. There's possibilities. Anybody can do it. APAC representing. But also, this is an elimination bracket round one. So now that you head into these final two games. Now but this Fault Tunnel was the place to be in the previous game. We saw quite a few showdowns. But it's La Cite de France who picked it early. Oh, my. And they're going for the ambush. 100 Thieves have to be so careful. La Cite de France, patience is the name of the game here. They do not want to show here, Dan. One reload, one shield cell gets popped, and their plan is ruined. And again, this wouldn't happen in a CM meta. You wouldn't be able to get away with it. Your heartbeats would be scanned. Sure, a Bloodhound can give you a scan information, but you are alerted to it. There's no scan character here for 100 Thieves. Hold your breath, everyone. Here's the ambush. Can 100 Thieves survive? Get away from it. But here comes the push now from the Cedar France. The Cedar France get the scan as well. As you can see, the knock comes through under Vaxlon. And now it's a three versus two, making it a two versus one. And it should be an easy clean. The ambush was executed perfectly. The Cedar de France are rewarded for their patience. But is there a third party? I can see in the horizon, Enter Force 36 are starting to creep up on this one. Are there going to be enough situations to Ooh. reset? Do the rats become the ratted? I'm not sure that makes sense, but you can kind of <laughs> get an idea of what I'm talking about. There's the sky nade, there's the scan, and now Aimbot goes to work. Oh, wow, that's a big nade, though. Dark Veil goes down to give you the coverage, as now they can use the scan from the Bloodhound to give you that extra info through that Dark Veil. But I don't think they were able to get that initial knock quick enough. So La Cite de France are able to scamper away and will be able to reset in this vault tunnel. A little taste of your own medicine for La Cite de France, but for 100 Thieves, the worst possible result. Let's be real. I mean, when you're looking at the standings overall, 100 Thieves were bottom of the table coming into this game, Dan. And they go out inside that top three. It's heartbreaking for them. And the worrying thing is, you know, when we talk about what that placement point situation must have to be to get you into that top 10, they're going to need a victory plus a lot of kills if they are going to survive in match eight and get into 11th round two. Now, oh. in a force 36 are entering with force. Oh, the shot's coming in with the R9. It's going to be Lissi de France who seems to be losing this fight. The hit point from the scout is pretty darn clean, and so is the fight. Lissi de France lose their vault tunnel. They will be eliminated, but one's still alive, I believe. The sky's now on the edge of zone. Xenox, Lou with it all to do. Lou getting burnt by the ring. Can he survive? No, they can't. The sky's eliminated.
eliminated. Fnatic eliminated as well. 15 squads remain. You were right. One did escape from us into France, but it's not going to go well and probably will fall soon as suddenly everything's blown into action here on World's Edge. It's MDY White who hold the high ground. Gibby Bubble goes down and we'll see the Gibby Bombardment also start to fall and rain down on those that are below them. Pioneer's been a nuisance, by the way, in this game. Bayou's gone down as well. Aurora eliminated in the meantime while this fight plays takes. Minyu left on into own. Can he connect for one? That's yes. But is he going to be able to turn it into more? Looks for that shield swap. Not going to get it. Pioneers live. Newcastle will drag his friend back into cover and say, back on your feet, soldier. We've got more work to do. Yeah, Pioneers. Now, Pioneers, for some reason, seem to find themselves there tournament after tournament. But then they'll still get into that finals lobby. I'm sure of it. They're just one of these squads you expect to make that elimination run. Now, circle-wise, is going to be a little bit more north than we saw the finish earlier. It isn't going to be directly on landslide like it was prior. Instead, it's going to be on the mountain side where currently on a Esports hole. One of the most iconic plays I can remember in Apex history was made on this side. It was the Hardecki solo play to win a game for his squad. We're going to have to see if we see something equally as special from one of these teams. Gambane onto Sun under a lot of pressure here and it's complexity who seem to be getting the better of them. However, there's the shield swap coming in from Yusna. Oh. oh my god, Luna's gone down as well. He's a one-man army, surely. Not the 1v3 in this situation. It isn't gonna happen. Monsoon clutches up. But if Riddlorder can just force some of these team backs and play the rock on the western side, they'll actually be in a really good spot because they'll have more cover than any other team in the lobby. There's Hennon Force 36 once again who are creeping up on this zone as well. They're forcing Onik Esports away, but Onik are holding them out of zone. Jaylings play under this tower. E6 above them for now. A lot of responsibility here on Nax as well, on that controller. Try and force players away, try and do entry damage, break some shields, but most importantly, do not get knocked. Jaylings need to give themselves a chance here. They have to get a good 10 points from this match going into match number eight. Confrontation though on the other side of the map. It's Onik Esports, Enter Force 36. And it's a difficult one to try and navigate, oh but now here comes J Link. This is massive. This is E6 in front of them. If they can eliminate them, then they have a chance. They now control this northern side of the zone. But all of a sudden, Red Lord see this fight break out. They're pressurizing them. They're pinning them in this corner. And oh no, J Link, this could be a nightmare for you. And this is what I was saying about Red Lord on this western side. You've got the extra coverage, you've got the extra elevation as E36 go down, and J Link might be next. Riddlord are ascending it in the meantime onto Jaylings. They will be eliminated, but Jaylings forced their way into the top five at least. Onik Esports still alive, and I'm pretty sure they still have some shots in that Kraber. And Onik Esports starting to close that gap to the top 10. They're in 12th position at the moment. Pioneers still alive as a solo rat. So it's going to be Onik Esports versus Riddlorder with maybe a little influence from Sir Dell himself. If Dell can win this game from this position as a solo, then he fully deserves the title of Sir. Well, you mentioned the historic plays, the solo wins that we saw in this final circle. It's happened before with Hardecki. I wouldn't put it well, out of the realms what, of possibility. I tell you what, there's an opportunity here because these two teams, they're going to have a little bit of a scrap. And that might just open the door, depending on how long this fight takes to finish. Racky moving in here, good damage coming through. Crusader gets the first knock, Yukio will fall. But where is Dell in all of this? Where are the pioneers? There he is. Dell gets involved, he sees where the knock's happening. He wants to get that extra little bit of damage. I tell you what, Surely maybe there's still a chance. Dell, he's gonna step up. He sends the shield forward, but can he get into a position to close this out as the solo? I don't think he can, but for Onik, what a moment this is. A huge win in the penultimate game in the elimination bracket. So 100 Thieves on 10. They need to get to what, around 40? At the moment, the cutoff is 33. So let's say no one scored points above them. It would have to be a victory plus 11 kills to even reach 33. I mean, this is where 100 Thieves are probably out at this point. It, it would have to be kind of record-breaking situation for them to find themselves into the elimination round two. FC Destroy up in the train station at the moment. It's Enter Force 36 in third place overall, who only have Aimbot to rely on. But their work is done, Dan. They have 61 points overall. You would imagine they should be safe, but look at this! It's Jaylings! It's Jaylings out of nowhere who are trying to clean this up, and JMW taking so much damage. Can he survive? No! Jaylings down to just one. Nags is a 
Solo has his team's life on his shoulders. Jaylings fall, they will be eliminated. It's the end of the road for Jaylings. It was Fnatic on the other side who are playing with so much freedom and flow at the moment. They've managed to get the banner. They could potentially get back up to a full three with a respawn beacon ahead of them. And Yuka's got a Kraber as well. I would not want to be in the path of Fnatic in the moment because they don't give a crap where you are. They are going to be happily pushing on you because they're already guaranteed. They are just damaging everything in their wake. Pioneer's just eliminated as well. Their job is done. They will be with us tomorrow. Onik Esports looking to solidify their position in the top 10. Rackets already got one dog. And Shady's trying to do a little bit more damage. They're dancing around the cat wall at the moment. Onik control this side of the zone. The black hole will be destroyed. Lumichan has gone down from Fnatic. The balloon might be a big play here if you can get past this bombardment that's coming down from the skies. And even though Crusader has fought, Onik are holding on the moment. Shane needs to get that shield battery popped for MDY White inside of the top 10. Might be about to win a fight that solidifies it. MDY White want to solidify it. Disguise also trying to stay alive to keep their possible journey. Onik Esports eliminated. Have they done enough? They are one of the bubble teams. Disguise have lost one. Xenox and Doop trying to work as a two here. Doop needs to go huge. But Doop's just going to go down and now Xenox falls. Trying to survive, knowing the placement points might be enough for him. Seven squads now remaining. Senox is trying to drag his team into tomorrow's tournament. It's still doable, even as a solo. Top six. Six teams remain. Senox has to rat for Disguised if they want to be in elimination round two tomorrow. There's a Crypto in the lobby, though. And he is going to be scanned. He doesn't want to pop these cells. He doesn't want to give information away. But now comes the push, and Senox. Senox gets help from above. He's getting help from above here. He might be able to get a shield swap in this position. The Arc Stars are here. Sanox oh. will fall. Disguise are eliminated as we're down to our top four. And Disguise will not do enough. That KP could have been everything for them. But it's currently Pulverex who hold that 10th position. Being followed by Ganbari Otazan, who still have a chance as well here. As a two, as the Dark Veil comes up. Four squads remaining. Oh, 109 spray from down low coming in from Dogma. But as a duo, do they have enough? Do they have the nerve, Dan? Four teams alive, only one of them guaranteed to be in elimination round two. This is the fight here for Gambari Otazan against Pulverex. Pulverex holding 10th position at the moment. If Geo take them down, they give themselves the best chances ever. But they're taking so much damage as the ring now gets involved. Dog won the last player alive here for Gambare Otisan. Can they win the fight? It's a 3v1. They will go down as well. As Pulverex might have now done enough. Gambare out. Oh no! Pulverex down as well! Oh my god! Go next! Go next! Go next have a chance! If Go Next can win this fight, they can send themselves into elimination round two. But it's FC Destroy that they go up against. Go Next are locked in! Go next by name. The question is, will it be go next tomorrow? Slab Bambino. Missy as well. Winner 3v3. You'll be back on this main stage tomorrow, and they've got them pinned. They've got an L-Star to work with as well. Utility looking all good, and they've got shield swaps. This is looking good for Go Next. Remember where they were. They were in Bambino's 19 place. down! Bambino has gone down, though. It's Slab now. Looks for that shield swap. Can he even the numbers, though? Bambino falling with the flank here from Slab. Can't get that knock, and it's a 2v3. It's a 2v3v1. V FC Destroy will win it. But Go Next had the opportunity of a lifetime and quite simply, couldn't get over the line. They gave themselves the best chance to go next. They were all the way down in the bottom three going into that game. But unfortunately, they will fall short. But what that means is Pulverex secure their spot in Elimination Round 2. Onik Esports secure their spot in Elimination Round 2. And in the previous top eight, as we expected,
the likes of MDY White, E6, North Eption, E36, Complexity, Pioneers, FC Destroy and Fnatic will all be competing tomorrow at the ALGS Championships here in Birmingham. Some teams like 100 Thieves, that would be the end. Coming in 20th, coming in last place here as we take a look at our overall series results. Your top 10 on the left side will be going to tomorrow. Our elimination bracket round two, they of course will await the bottom 10 of our winners finals, which will also be playing tomorrow in order to see which 10 will make it to championship Sunday.